world-class veteran video game critic Michael does life. <laughs> oh, Michael. Hello all and welcome folks at home. It is super windy out here as you can probably see and hear. We are live continuing to discuss the Spider-Man situation. And by the way, we're going to be having exclusive coverage of Spider-Man 2 more than likely tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Let me know how we're doing in terms of audio. It is super windy out here folks at home. It is super windy out here folks at home. And I'm sure you can hear it a tad bit. But nonetheless, we're going to work through it. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm on the air. Can you hear me? How does it sound, folks, at home? It's super windy out here. That I know and that I can tell you. We are out here live. We have a lot to discuss here. First of all, the meta score for Spider-Man dropped to a 90. Okay, folks at home. The meta score for Spider-Man 2 PS5 dropped to a 90 yesterday. As you can see, it was at a 91. Today, it dropped to a 90. So that's first things first. The meta score for Spider-Man 2 PS5 dropped to a 90. Now, if we compare the Super Mario Wonder... It's getting really windy out here, folks. If we compare that to the Super Mario Wonder score... Super Mario Wonder, as of this broadcast, has, I believe, about a 93. Spider-Man is currently sitting at 90. That's yesterday's image, okay? So Spider-Man 2 PS5 has dropped to a 90. Okay, yesterday it was at a 91. Let's get a one in the chat, folks at home. Let's get a one in the chat. we got to touch base. Let's go. She told me she did not, and it's so damn sad it is, and she said it was so sad. We have Biden energy. I fell asleep, yeah, because your stream was so damn boring. I fell asleep, and then I said hello. Oh, I am so bored, bored, bored. I am so bored, bored, bored. All right, we're, we're just seeing if the audio is um, sufficient. It's very windy out here, folks, at home. And when it's windy out here, it is a challenge audio-wise. So hopefully it sounds okay. I mean, you're going to hear wind regardless, but nonetheless, it is the way the cookie crumbles. So like I said earlier, guys, we got to pack them in. What's going on? 80 viewers? There's no way that's right. Unbelievable. Let me see. Okay, 200 viewers. It wasn't updating on my end. I just refreshed it. Now we're at 200 viewers. All right. So if you are just tuning in, folks at home, if you are just tuning in, folks at home, Spider-Man 2 PS5 dropped to a 90, and here comes another wind gust. Here comes another wind gust. Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5 dropped down to a 90, and Super Mario Wonder, the reviews just poured out for Super Mario Wonder, and it currently sits at a 93 as of this broadcast. It has outdone, outshined Spider-Man 2. She told us she did not, and it's so damn sad it is. Well, tomorrow we are going to be having exclusive coverage of Spider-Man 2 PS5, so if we can't break 500 viewers tomorrow, then I don't know what to tell you, but nonetheless, that is tomorrow, more than likely. So, uh, we will see how the cookie crumbles. Someone make a threat. No, don't do that. Well, I mean, if you want to get banned. But I'm not recommending it, so. Alrighty, folks. This is the current reality of the situation for Spider-Man 2 PS5. This isn't necessarily clickbait, although I will tell you that, um, well, this is a tad ridiculous. Let's go through this. I know some of you guys know this already, but nonetheless, this is a big red flag. 
It looks like a cyberpunk delayed message. You know those cyberpunk delayed messages? If the fake fans were in here in uh, September of 2020, we were looking at the cyberpunk delayed messages, and they were saying, CD Projekt Red was saying, uh, we need more time on the game. It's not going to ship until it's ready. This is what this is reminding me of. And you have the Spider-Man fanboys shilling this to the moon and back. And when I look at this, you know what I see? Unfortunately... We are a jaded boomer, and we're a tad cynical. But I will tell you that the fact that they even came out of the woodwork, okay, the fact that they even came out of the woodwork and said, hey, please update your disc copy of Spider-Man 2 is just a little wild to me. Because what that essentially says, what that essentially says is that the disc copy is really not where it needs to be. Could be a tad buggy could be a little bit under in terms of performance. That's what this message is saying to me. So they are basically saying, hey guys, please update your disc copy to the latest patch so that you have the best experience. I've never seen, from my memory anyway, I've never seen a developer so adamant about saying, hey, if you have the disc version, please update because the disc version is outdated. The disc version is a lot worse than what we currently have in our current build. You know what I mean? That's what that is saying to me. And as such, now, since they came out with that message, because here's the thing, I wasn't even gonna get up, I wasn't even gonna get a physical copy. It's too inconvenient. You gotta go out to the store and buy the game. Ridiculous, right? Or you gotta wait for it to ship. I was gonna get it digitally. And I was going to preload it. And then all of a sudden, Insomniac, they put this message out and they say, hey, wait a minute, if you have a disc copy, you can play it offline. It's still uh, totally done, but you might want to update because, well, we're not going to say why. But that is what they're saying here. And to me, this is a red flag because now we have to check out the disc version of the game, Spider-Man 2 PS5. Now we have to check out the disc version of the game. Spider I'm literally in the wind, guys. I'm literally out here in the wind. Name one streamer that's going to come outside. They're not coming outside. They can't make it outside of that basement. Okay? They couldn't do it. They got social anxiety. The trees are coming down here. Holy shit. So we will be covering the disc version of Spider-Man 2 PS5. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And that is going to be more than likely exclusive content because most people don't play what is on the disc. They either update it or they don't buy the disc at all. So if you want exclusive Spider-Man 2 PS5 coverage, make sure you are subscribed. Do that right now. We have over 70-something thousand subscribers. And we would love for the Spider-Man fans to tag along. So I am going to be playing this game and we are going to see what it's all about. And hopefully when we play it, we're not bored out of our skull. Last night we played Skull Island, and man, I was hoping for a total disaster. That's what the internet led me to believe. It was going to be a total disaster. It was going to be the worst game ever. And unfortunately, it was just boring. There wasn't many frame rate issues. There wasn't screen tearing. There wasn't um, crashes. It just worked, and it was boring. So... Uh, I was actually very disappointed last night that the game wasn't a total shit show because that's what I was expecting. I was expecting a total shit show. We didn't get a total shit show. So that was a waste of time. It was just, quite frankly, it was just boring. Here comes a massive 18-wheeler, and I know you can hear it. Holy shit. She told us she did not love, and it's so damn sad, it's so damn sad. She told us she did not love, and it's so damn sad, it's so damn sad. So again, to reiterate and repeat, which we will be doing multiple times throughout this stream, this is the current concern for Spider-Man 2 PS5. The disc version seems to be a little bit behind compared to the current build, and they are suggesting that, hey, if you are going out and buying a disc copy of Spider-Man 2 PS5, they highly suggest that you update the game, which I will not be doing because I am curious to see what is on the disc. So if you want that exclusive coverage, make sure you stay tuned because no one else is going to show you that. And I'm not saying it's another cyberpunk, but for them to come out and even make a statement like that just kind of says, well, everything you need to know. Clearly, the disc version is a tad bit behind 
in some areas compared to the current build, and I want to see what those things are. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. We will be live with the game in some regard tomorrow, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, we will be playing this tomorrow, and um, regardless, it's going to be exclusive. So she told me she did not love and it's so damn sad it is off to a slow start here today i'll tell you what folks no one's coming through popping the cherry terrible support here today what's going on we're gonna have to do another midnight caller we get more support on midnight caller unbelievable no, the fake Spider-Man fans can't go 12 rounds with world class, I'll tell you that, and it's the saddest it's ever been. The meta score dropped for Spider-Man 2 PS5 down to 890. Actually, that's not true. Randy Butternubs is back in the fold. Let's recognize that. I forgot about that, but I just remembered it. Randy fucking Butternubs is back, and he is the OG member of this show. OG member of this show has come back, and we do a... Pr what the hell was that? Guys, there's things falling from the tree, okay? There's things falling from the tree. It's unbelievable. Randy fucking Betternups is back in the building, the OG member. Before I even said, hey, please member up, he membered up. And speaking of membering up, here we go. We got Carlos coming through. We got Carlos in the house. Carlos, a brand new member. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. Carlos in the building. We got Nightwing member for 18 months. That's what we're talking about. Nightwing member for 18 months. Coming through so hard and so strong. Over 200 hours into Boulder's Gate 3. And I can confidently say, no game this year can possibly compete currently on my second playthrough. So much meat on the bone. It is it is a game that, you, well, I mean, you got to have a lot of free time to play that and get really invested into Boulder's Gate 3. I mean, the combat scenario, I, I was playing that game. The combat scenario, that took me 45 minutes to defeat potentially two enemies. It's just like, yeah. This is a time sink game, and look, if it gets game of the year, I'm not going to get mad, okay? I can recognize what the game brought to the table. The combat isn't necessarily for me, but with that said, if it gets game of the year, I will be clapping. Because there are plenty of games that do not deserve to get game of the year. If Zelda gets game of the year, I will be okay with that. Because at one point, I thought Zelda was as low as you could go. It's, it's the same game as Breath of the Wild, just with new gimmicks. Okay, well, and then more games came out. More games came out, and they continued to disappoint over and over and over again. So now, that's where we stand. She told us she did not love. It's so damn sad. She told us she did not love. If you are new to this channel, we have over 70-something thousand subscribers. Please join the crew and subscribe today. You're going to want to stay tuned because we are going to be having exclusive coverage of Spider-Man 2 PS5 very shortly. Tragic bus member for seven, 14 months. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. Why don't you just stream inside? Because that's boring. You don't get the show. Tell your wife I said hello. Five Nights at Freddy is coming through. He is popping the cherry. That's what we're talking about. Five Nights at Freddy is coming through, and he is popping the cherry. That's what we're talking about. It didn't pop up on the screen, but I see it. Five Nights at Freddy coming through and popping the cherry. That is what we're talking about. Coming through so hard, so strong in the face of adversity. Holy shit, what the hell is that? It is super windy out here today, folks at home. It is super windy out here today, folks at home. And the meta score dropped for Spider-Man 2 PS5. It is not at a 91 as it shows right there. That is from yesterday. It dropped down to a 90. And unfortunately, the current culture is that if the game drops down to an 89, it is considered a flop by many. If your favorite game comes out and it's in the 80s, most people are going to say it's a flop. When Final Fantasy 16 came out and I saw the 88, my head went, it's a flop. It's got to be a 90 or above to be it's considered over. great. That's just the way it is.
The real Michael Myers. That's what we're talking about. The real Michael Myers is in the building. Sense. Pop in that cherry. Watched a few episodes of John Carpenter's new show, Suburban Screams. Not bad. Good show. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. The real Michael Myers is in the building. Got the lasers ready. John Carpenter's back as well. I'll tell you what. It is so amazing. Well, he said he directed that from his couch, so I... Uh, that made me not want to watch it, but, you know, it is what it is. It's John Carpenter. He does not, He has nothing left to prove in the industry. You know, he can sit on the couch all day and do nothing if he wants. I mean, he's already made his classic movies that will uh, live forever, and, um, you know, he's well past his prime. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as he gets his approval, he's a legend. It don't really matter. But with that said, uh, it is interesting to hear that it's not that terrible. Because the last thing he directed was trash, Okay. The Ward was absolute trash. And I'm glad he's directed something since then because The Ward from John Carpenter, he directed, he didn't write it, of course, but he directed that and it was absolute garbage. Okay, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I mean, the script is trash. It's like some fucking spooky asylum movie and it's so fucking generic. It's got like Amber Heard in it or some shit. I don't fucking remember. Trash movie. But, you know, you look at George Romero and you look at the last movie that George Romero made and it was Survival of the Dead and it wasn't great either, so... Sometimes it's best to just retire before you make a trash movie. But it is what it is, I'll tell you that, folks. Spider-Man 2 PS5 currently has a 90 on Metacritic. Let's go ahead and get that updated. We'll show you today's score on Metacritic. And we're going to reiterate this here, what we were talking about earlier. And there we have it. Let's just include Super Mario as well. We're going to be including Super Mario as well, and check this out, folks. Check this out right here. Boom. So there you have it. Spider-Man 2 PS5 has dropped to a 90. Still fantastic. However, right now, currently, Super Mario Wonder has a 93 on Metacritic, and that is coming out the same day. I've never seen... It's a big day this Friday, okay? You're getting Mario and Spider-Man. That is literally huge. And it's crazy to think that both games are coming out on the same day. If I were Insomniac, if I were Sony, I would have pushed it back. Sure, it's Marvel, sure, it's Spider-Man, but you're competing against Mario, and Mario is bigger than Spider-Man, I would argue. Maybe not. Not entirely sure. Jack coming Jack through. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate it. Cents. John Carpenter says Edge Kills is his favorite out of the new trilogy. What are we thinking? Uh, well, I, 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 well, I'll tell you what. I, I certainly, um, I'll certainly say that Halloween 2018 is not my favorite, okay? It's actually backwards for me. Halloween 2018 is like Halloween ends for me. And then Halloween Kills, it gets a little bit better. Okay, it's not perfect, certainly. It's not perfect, okay? But the flashback sequence in Halloween Kills is really well done for the most part. And then you come to Halloween Ends and it's totally new. It's totally new, it's totally refreshing. It doesn't work for a lot of people, but with that said, they just got better for me as the uh, trilogy went along. So Halloween 2018 played it safe and it was so sad. It was so boring, really, to be honest. You know, and they tried to replace Dr. Loomis and it's like, yeah, this is cringe. This is trash. So I don't know what the fascination is with Halloween 2018. I'm not saying it's total, total trash. But when you try and replace Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis, I'm out. I'm sorry. You know, there's even a line. Laurie Strode says, it's the new Loomis. I'm sorry. That's garbage. And plus, as the films went on, you know, visually they had kind of a better identity. You know, Halloween Kills is um, a lot more stylistic looking than Halloween 2018. Halloween 2018 is pretty it's freaking over. bare bones. You know, there's some there's some cool uh, moments of Halloween 2018, but it's so boring. Big Boss 6,568 super shattered four pounds and 99 pence. Did you hear? Walmart is out of copium. The snoise bought it all. What does that mean? Now, I don't know what that means. Can anyone explain Sneed? Can anyone explain what Sneed means in here? I know it's like some V lingo. I don't know what that one means, though. S-N-E-E-D. Sneed. 
Big Boss coming through. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. Big Boss coming through. The Saunders Child is back in the building. Will you stream Stray Souls and Alan Wake 2? I don't know about Stray Souls. Never heard of it. But Alan Wake 2, we will definitely be covering and more than likely streaming that slob. Because I got a bone to pick with that game. So that's the next game that we will be covering, and we're going to have to get videos out pretty shortly on Island Week 2, because that is coming right around the corner. So there's a lot of games coming out. you got Super Mario Wonder. you got Spider-Man 2 PS5. This is this Friday, and then next week we have Alan Woke 2. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and discuss again the main topic here, the current concern for Spider-Man 2 PS5. Insomniac has come out, and they have said that folks at home, if you are buying the disc copy, we strongly recommend that you update before playing. Now, why would they say that? Well, they're saying that because the disc copy of Spider-Man 2 PS5 is likely not up to date as the current build. And they want everyone to enjoy this with the latest build in mind. So does that mean that the disc copy is the next Cyberpunk? No. However, with that said, for them to come out and make a statement like this, uh, it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild. Because if the game were fine on disc, they wouldn't have come out and said that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's really that simple. So with that said, what that means for this show is that we will be covering the disc version. Because initially, I didn't even care. You know? I didn't really even care. I was just going to buy it digitally, preload it, just like everyone else. All of a sudden, I see this from Insomniac, and I'm thinking to myself, like, well, wait a minute. Now we got to freaking cover the disc version. I want to see what Insomniac has mastered on that disc. I want to see how terrible it might very well be, if at all. So that's what we will be doing, and no one else is going to be showing you that because all of the reviewers, they obviously got the digital version of the game. So it is going to be very interesting to see the disc copy. Now again, you can play it totally offline, and it is complete from you know start to finish. However, with that said, again, for them to come out and make this statement, uh, it just kind of says like, hey, the disc copy might be a little rough around the edges. So... It's not another cyberpunk, although it could be. <laughs> we just don't know. I mean, who has played the disc version of this game? I mean, I know the game leaked about a week or so ago. You can see all the spoilers if you really wanted to. With that said... Tough crowd. Tough crowd. I'm cracking open the mountain, dude. You guys are falling asleep already. It's so sad. We talk about games on a daily basis, and these people are in here falling asleep on a daily basis. Yet they go into their own little chat rooms and type 100 words a minute. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They pretend like, oh, we don't communicate in chat rooms. Yet they go into their little private chat room and go, Pfft. you know, I mean, unbelievable. So again, as you can see, folks at home, Spider-Man 2 PS5 has dropped to a 90 on Metacritic. Now, does that mean that this game is the next Cyberpunk 2077? No, certainly not. However, with that said, yet again, let's reiterate this. They said that they would highly recommend that you update, if you buy this game, Spider-Man 2 PS5, on disc to update before playing. So again, this is going to be a tad bit rough around the edges because if that weren't the case they wouldn't have put that message out so we will be showcasing the disc version without the updates and you're probably not going to find that anywhere else to be quite frank so if you want to see what the disc version of spider-man 2 ps5 is all about this is the place to be not that anyone cares but again insomniac put this out i was going to buy this digitally i was going to say i don't care about physical copies it is inconvenient and you know, the convenience of digital is just there. You can play it as soon as it unlocks. All ready to go. Fantastic, right? Well, Insomniac comes out with this message. It looks like a cyberpunk is delayed message. And quite frankly, uh, that isn't what we want to see. 
And I've never seen a developer do that before regarding a disc copy of the game. So clearly the game might very well be rough around the edges in certain areas. Do we care? 99% of you don't. However, with that said, for the five people that do, we will be covering Spider-Man 2 PS5 on the disc. Let me check the audio to see how we're doing, folks. Let me check the audio to see how we're doing. Let me see. Okay, 200 viewers. It wasn't updating on my end. I, I thought the game wasn't a total sh Well, he said he directed that from a... Oh, well, the audio sounds a lot better than I thought. Demon Vector coming through. That's what we're talking about. Let's get a dub for Demon. Let's get some bats in the chat for Demon Vector. That's what we're talking about. Let's get some bats in the chat for Demon Vector. Demon Vector coming through so hard and so strong. Welcome to the winner's circle over here. We do appreciate your support. Demon Vector coming through. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, we appreciate that. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh... If you don't think I'm a fan of Spider-Man 2 PS5, well, check this out. We got the Spider-Man colors on. I'm going to tell you what, it's so fantastic. We're here five years later. My Spider-Man, my original Spider-Man coverage was utterly fantastic. Okay, a lot of energy surrounding that release. Not as much energy this time around, but with that said, still a lot of hype. And I'm going to tell you what, folks at home. We're hoping that this isn't yet another disaster. But even if Spider-Man 2 PS5 is a disaster on disc, we can always jump over to Super Mario, okay? You literally have the biggest Friday that I've ever seen in gaming in 48 hours, okay? You have Spider-Man and you have Mario the same day. That's right. You have Mario and you have Spider-Man the same day. Bro, I didn't know Mario was coming out the same day until someone in the chat said it was coming out on Friday, and I thought, wait a minute, why in the hell are they releasing the games the same day? That's insane, because now they're going to go head-to-head. -head. But most gamers are going to buy both. Most gamers are going to buy both. I mean, you know, if you got a Switch, you need something new to play. This is a brand This is a brand new Mario experience. This could be another classic that people talk about in another 10, 15, 20 years. You know what I mean? Now, Spider-Man 2 ain't going to have that, because it's just another sequel that kind of brings more of the same. Not necessarily saying it's the worst thing in the world, but with that said, it's not necessarily new. And I would argue Super Mario Wonder is a lot more new than Spider-Man 2 PS5. So if you had to pick one, well, it depends on how big of a hardcore Nintendo fanatic you are uh, versus Marvel and Spider-Man. So that's really what it ultimately boils down to. But as you can see... Currently on Metacritic, on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right here, on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right here, Super Mario Wonder is higher than Spider-Man 2 PS5. Super Mario Wonder is higher than Spider-Man 2 PS5. 93 for Super Mario Wonder, and Spider-Man 2 PS5 is currently sitting at a 90. Now, yesterday, as you can see right there, yesterday... It was sitting in a 91. So a new review dropped for Spider-Man 2 PS5, and it dropped down to a 90. And quite frankly, if it gets down even lower, then it might it might be considered a flop to a certain you know crowd, the Xbox fanboys. Okay. Now, does Xbox have anything to show for? No, they don't. They had Starfield and they had Forza. Here comes another wind gust. Here comes another wind gust. Holy shit! We got to make sure things don't fly around, okay? But you look at what Xbox has, and I can't think of anything going forward in the immediate future. They had Starfield, they had Forza Motorsport. Now what do they have? Sony has PlayStation, Sony has Spider-Man 2 PS5. Nintendo has Super Mario Wonder. So There you have it. She told me she didn't love. 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 
quick sticks coming through. That's what we're talking about. Member for 11 months. I don't get how people manage to get themselves excited for Spider-Man. It's just more of the same with every release. Well, I, you know, I said that. I said that yesterday. I said, well, maybe we need to apologize to the Madden devs over at EA. I mean, I was looking at the Spider-Man remastered footage versus Spider-Man 2, and it's like, bro, this is the same game. You know, we're still in New York City, and it's like, yeah, they've expanded the map, but it's still primarily the same game. And it's like, man, they had five years to do something new, and what did they do? They gave you a wingsuit now so you can fly around like freaking Superman. Okay, so now less people are going to do the web swinging in Spider-Man 2 PS5 because of the wing glider suit. Even Skillup mentioned that in his review. He said he basically had to like stop utilizing the wingsuit so much because he wasn't web swinging as much. It's just a lot more convenient. You know what I mean? It's a lot more convenient to just start flying around in Spider-Man 2 PS5 as opposed to doing the old-fashioned web swinging. Because as soon as you get the wingsuit, it's like, oh, okay, well, we'll just use this instead. So they basically turned it into Just Cause 4 um, where you have, you know, the wingsuit and you could fly around in that game, and you have the uh, grapple hook as well. She told me she did not love. It is so damn sad. So again, folks at home, if you are just tuning in, Insomniac came out with this yesterday. I didn't even know about it until we looked at it. Spider-Man 2 PS5 on disc, they are strongly recommending, and I know you can hear that fucking truck because I can barely hear myself talk. I know you can hear that fucking truck. That truck is loud as shit. But Insomniac came out and they basically said, hey bro, please update the game because the update features polish to the Gold Master version of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 available on disc, which improves the opening sections of the game and includes other general enhancements to your Spidey experience, including some additional accessibility options. So it seems like the opening sections of the game on disc without the patch might be a little rough around the edges, and that's why they're saying, hey, please update. So we're going to be playing that version, the version they don't want you to play, very shortly. So if you would like to see that exclusive content, stay tuned, and uh, we will play it as soon as we can. The disc version Spider-Man 2 PS5. So there you have it. This is what Insomniac put out. This is not Photoshop, and it looks like a delayed message. It looks like another cyberpunk. I get cyberpunk PTSD when I look at a thing like this. You know what I mean? And everyone's praising this. Everyone's praising this. What is there to see here and here? What is there to see positively in here? Sure, it says, it says right here, the disc contains the entire game, I would hope, and is playable from start to finish with no patch or online requirement. And people are looking at that, and they're saying, holy shit, that's amazing. We love Insomniac. And it's like, guys... For a lot of games that come out still on PlayStation 5, no internet is required. It's a common misconception, and it still is to this day. It's only getting worse. But a lot of games, especially on the PlayStation 5, you can play them offline without patches. Now, is it going to be the best experience? Not necessarily. So you're going to want to get those updates. But with that said, if you wanted to, you could just put the game in. For most games, unless it says it on the box, for most games, you can just put the game in, let it install, and play it completely, totally offline. For a lot of games on the PlayStation 5, a lot of the games that I own on the PlayStation 5, the discs, you can play them completely, totally offline. From start to finish, no internet required, no update required. So the old school gaming experience is still here, but it will be definitely changing in the next five or so years as we continue to usher in the all digital era world premiere exclusive world premiere would you like to continue playing please check in to the internet that is the future of gaming folks and i'll be very blown away and very surprised if the playstation 6 comes with a disk drive there is no way in hell that the playstation 6 is coming with a disk drive there's no way now they might sell one as an accessory and it's going to be super expensive but with that said there's no way that the next PlayStation, the next Xbox, is coming with a disk drive. It ain't happening. 
and Alan Wake 2, which releases next week, next Friday to be exact, so one week from this Friday, Alan Wake 2 is all digital, and not only that, but the PC gamers hate this, it is exclusive to Epic Games. <laughs> yeah. And, and quite frankly, who was asking for Alan Wake 2? The fans that were asking for that, they probably don't play video games anymore. They moved on to more respected mediums. They probably read books now or something. Okay? It's so sad, believe me. Because quite frankly, it's a sequel that should have released years ago. Alan Wake 2 should have released years ago. The fact that it took them 12, 13 years to put out this slot, this walking sim RTX tech demo, that's total trash. But the consumers are lining up to the buffet. I mean, the line for the buffet is crazy for this Friday when the buffet opens, okay? The buffet's opening this Friday, and the line is already outside the freaking, you know, wrapped around the freaking building. It's unbelievable. You know, they're lining up to consume Spider-Man 2 PS5. They can't wait to do that. And Mario as well. They are ready to consume. They have their wallet ready. They don't care about the quality. They don't question the quality. They are there for one reason and it's one reason over. only. It is to consume. And they're going to do that yet again next Friday Carpenter when Alan Wake 2 releases. Much love, Mackle. I love John Carpenter's coming through. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. Thanks John Carpenter is coming through really hard and really strong. Let's get some uh, rainy weather here. Holy shit, look at that effect. That is unbelievable. Great graphics out here. John Carpenter coming through. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. John Carpenter coming through. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, folks at home. We're going to have exclusive coverage of Spider-Man 2 PS. And again, if you are just tuning in, folks at home, this is the current concern. Again, I've reiterated this multiple times, but for the folks at home that keep coming in, this is the current concern. The disc version of Spider-Man 2 PS5, they are highly suggesting, Insomniac is highly suggesting that you update the disc copy of Spider-Man 2 PS5 as the current build has a lot more polish. So what we're going to do is we're going to be playing the disc version of Spider-Man 2 PS5. And again, for some strange reason, apparently Spider-Man 2 PS5 has no new game plus. And a lot of people were complaining about the first game having that problem, and then of course they dropped that, I believe, a little bit later on after it released. But you would have thought like, okay, well, why isn't that their day one? Why isn't New Game Plus their day one? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's just so sad. But they got to have a roadmap for the inevitable DLC, for the inevitable, you know, two or three year plan for Spider Man 2 PS5, then some DLC with Miles, and then Spider Man 3 in the next five, six, seven years. But for Spider Man 3, I really don't know how they're going to make that game. The only way I can see that happening is if they take it to Paris or they have these uh, portals. Okay? I I'm not even trolling. I watched the new Spider-Man movie. Tobey Maguire comes right out of the fucking portal. I don't know what it's about. It's like some other character in the MCU universe. I'm not a nerd. I don't care. Nonetheless, that's how they're going to have to do it in Spider-Man 3. They're going to have to kind of like do these transition scenes where it's like, you know, Peter Parker and Miles, they go into the portal and they're teleported back to New York from the 80s or something. And it presents different gameplay mechanics because... You don't have the technology. The technology, because of the time frame, is thrown out the window. Because of the timeline, is thrown out the window. And I think that would be a breath of fresh air for Spider-Man 3. Because, quite frankly, what are you going to do from here, gameplay-wise? I'm not talking about stories. We're not talking about spoilers. I'm talking about gameplay-wise. What are you going to do for Spider-Man 3? I just, quite frankly, don't know. I just, quite frankly, don't know. Because they've already added the wingsuit, they've already expanded New York City, what more can you really do? Quite frankly, what more can you really do? You either take it to a new location or you do period pieces within New York City so that way it has a distinct um, gameplay experience that's vastly different. Because if Spider-Man 3 is just more of the same, then quite frankly people are going to eventually get bored. So it's going to be very interesting to see, and I know we're... You know, this is like five, six, seven, eight years out. But it's going to be very interesting to see what Spider-Man 3 entails. from a game, Just from a gameplay perspective. We're not even talking about the story, what happens to the characters, or what have you. We're talking about just from a gameplay perspective. She told me she didn't love... <clears throat> 
She told me she didn't love. Three Spider-Mans. Well, they could do that, but if it's still going to be in New York City, it's going to be boring. If it's still going to be in New York City, it's still going to be boring. Hey there, mister, who let the damn simpleton out of the asylum? Who let the damn simpleton out of the asylum? Pizza delivery, DLC missions, crazy taxi. Yeah, they could do that. They really could do that. That would be fantastic. And that's what I'm saying. I think they need more mini games in Spider-Man 2 PS5 because, quite frankly, um, well, we're hoping that they have things to do in New York City because if they don't have things to do in New York City, it could get, quite frankly, uh, a little boring. So we'll have to wait and see. But I, I know you can equip the wingsuit and you can fly around like freaking Harry Houdini and go through the rings like in Superman 64. It's like they wanted to make Superman 64. You know, all of the reviewers were saying Superman 64 was trash because you had to go through these rings. And now they love it in Spider-Man 2 PS5. It's so sad, but maybe saddest it's ever been. <clears throat> Arthur Morgan coming through. That's what we're talking about. In Spider-Man 3, you will have you will have Thanos. I don't know who that is. That's the guy that snaps his finger. Guys, I don't watch those movies. I don't watch those movies. Maybe they should just hand it off to a new developer and give it a new take on Spider-Man because I'm done with the MCU stuff. It's so boring. It's so dated. Those movies are old. I mean, the Thanos movie that came out, that was like in 2012 or some shit, wasn't it? They started the MCU back in 2008. She told me she didn't love. She told me. It's all repetitive side content. Just makes it more boring the longer you play. Well, that's the problem that we had with Spider-Man PS4. That's the problem that we had with Spider-Man PS4. It was just the same kind of content. It was basically an, a Ubisoft open world game, and you roam around and you activate radio towers, and it's like, okay, well, we've kind of already done this before in other games. However, we could have cut it some slack because it was their first Spider-Man game. This is essentially their fourth Spider-Man game. This is essentially their fourth Spider-Man game, bro. This is essentially their fourth Spider-Man game. You have Spider-Man PS4 2018, you have Spider-Man Remastered, you have Spider-Man Miles, and now you have Spider-Man 2 PS5. So it is going to be very interesting to see how ultimately the cookie crumbles. And again, if you're just tuning in, this is the current concern with Spider-Man 2 PS5. The disc version of the game is a little behind compared to the current build, and they are suggesting that you update ASAP. So if you're buying this on disc, make sure you download the update so that you have the best experience possible. Now with that said, for me, we're going to go the opposite direction and we are going to be playing what is on the disc because now I'm curious. I wasn't even going to play the disc version because I was like, well, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Now all of a sudden Insomniac puts out that message and says, hey, uh, please update the game because the current build is a lot more polished, which is common sense. But with that said, maybe it means that... Uh, there's a few features that aren't in the game. Because I remember playing Ghost of Tsushima. I remember playing Ghost of Tsushima without the update. And the photo mode was very different. The photo mode in Ghost of Tsushima on the disc is very different than when you update it. It's not as good. So they, they added a lot to the photo mode. She told me she didn't love. She told me she didn't love. Uh, Wookie coming through with the five. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. Forty gigabytes, that's half the game. That's what the patch size is? Holy shit. The patch size is forty gigabytes? Unbelievable. So sad. He loves unfinished products. Well, you guys were praising this. There's literally one of the most top-rated uh, comments that I saw on the Skill Up review was that they were saying, oh, we can't wait to play a finished game. It's so polished. There's no bugs. It's um, you know utterly fantastic in terms of performance. So and then all of a sudden, they put this out, and it just kind of contradicts any of that. Dirty Wookie Super Shattered $5. Spider Pussnick Cores. Oh, no, 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 no. Slinging all on world class. Open up that wallet and consume like she don't love you, dirty hippie. Man, God, bro. Shut up! It's over! 
John Carpenter coming through. Hell yeah, by the way, appreciate that. John Carpenter coming through. Carpenter Forever Super Shattered $5. Hey, Mackle, did you hear they are going to reboot the N64? It should be out by next It's year. so damn windy we Would can't hear a damn thing. Up? <laughs> oh my! She told me she didn't love. She told me she didn't love. Well, it, it, it would take me literally hours to download 40 gigabytes, so I'm not I'm not updating it because, quite frankly, it's just not convenient. You know, they should have had the game ready. Clearly they didn't. I mean, they came out and even said that. They literally came out and even said that. Insomniac literally came out and said that, hey, we basically didn't finish the game. Please update it to this current build because it's a rough, it's a bit rough it's around over. the edges because they needed more time in the oven with the game. I mean, it's ridiculous. Imagine the chef coming out at the restaurant zero, saying, well, we need a little zero, bit more time zero, with this uh, steak zero, here. And it's like, well, I mean, it depends on how you like it, I suppose. Insomniac stealing features from Superman <clears throat> 64 well goes to show sometimes shovelware is cutting edge turning Spider-Man into Birdman. It's over. So sad. It's over, and it's the saddest, believe me, it's ever been. That I know and that I can tell you. Well, you put the wingsuit on in Spider-Man 2 PS5, and you're going to be gliding around New York City. And do we know... Actually, don't even tell me. I want to... I want I want to... I'm not looking at the chat now. Because I don't want to be spoiled. I don't want to be spoiled on some of the things that you may or may not be able to do in Spider-Man 2 PS5. Because, look, if we go to the new areas, the Bronx, this, that, and the third in the map, and there's nothing to do... It's going to be a total snooze fest, okay? You should be able to deliver pizzas. You should be able to deliver pizzas. You should be able to do certain things that you could do in the previous movies. But it is Marvel. And here comes another wind gust. Here comes another wind gust. Oh! Huh. We got to hold the equipment down in case it flies, okay? She told me she didn't love. 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 Alrighty, folks at home. So as you can see yet again, it dropped in score. I don't know what review dropped it, but it is down to a 90 on Metacritic. Still a great score, no doubt about it. But with that said, Super Mario Wonder has the lead currently. 93 on Metacritic. Sure, they're totally different games. We understand that. We get that. But with that said... It is the way the cookie crumbles. And then again, Insomniac coming out and saying this update features polish to the Gold Master version of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 available on disc, which improves the opening sections of the game and includes other general refinements to your Spidey experience. So they want you to update the game. Now, why do they want you to update the game? Is the disc version that bad? Well, that remains to be seen. we got to check it out. So stay tuned for exclusive coverage of Spider-Man 2 PS5 as we will be showcasing the disc version of the game. And that will be more than likely tomorrow. If we have to go to GameStop to get the disc version, we will. And they will probably do a midnight launch because quite frankly, you have Super Mario and you have Spider-Man. I mean, you got two massive games. The gamers are showing up, okay? Now, the, the jaded boomers in here will tell you that they miss midnight launches, yet they're too lazy and they're, you know, too uh, anxious to get outside of the basement, outside of the uh, home, to go to GameStop to see if that's still the thing. So they'd rather reminisce about, oh, I remember, you know, lining up to GameStop for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you know, in 2007. And it's like, well, yeah, you can still have that experience, buddy. You just go to GameStop. It's still a thing. Not as popular, but I mean, it's, it's, it's still a thing. Trust me, there's tons of GameStops that still do midnight things. They still have little parties. I mean, I, I remember going to the Xbox One launch. Um, and it's like, why are we buying this console, guys? I mean, you, you're getting... You get nothing. I mean, you get Dead Rising. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, it have more software than these modern-day consoles. I mean, here we are with the PS3, and we're just now getting um, Spider-Man, 
you know, three years into the console life cycle and the Xbox, you know, just now got Starfield and Forza. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. She don't love it so sad. 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 So make sure you guys stay tuned, okay? We will be covering Spider-Man 2 PS5 disc version, which there's not going to be much coverage of that on the internet because most people don't care about the you know, disc version. They want to buy it immediately, play it immediately, and the convenience route is digital, not disc. Hey there, mister who let the damn simpleton out of the asylum. Guys, the Red Dead Redemption anniversary is next week. Do we think Rockstar is going to do anything for the Red Dead Redemption 2 anniversary? It's the five-year anniversary for Red Dead Redemption 2 next week. Is Rockstar going to pull out a 60 frames update for PS5 and Series X? That would be cool. But I don't think they will. Nonetheless, the anniversary, the five-year anniversary for Red Dead Redemption 2 is next week. And if they're going to update the game, uh, you would think it would be on the five-year anniversary. So, hopefully they um, at least acknowledge it. But, you know, if GTA 6 has them super occupied or GTA Online, then I guess it is what it is. She don't love it so sad. She don't love it so sad. She don't love it so sad. Well, I'd rather have a GTA 6 announcement. I mean, I am just oversaturated with the Red Dead stuff. It feels like we've gotten Red Dead, Red Dead, Red Dead for the last 10 years. And we kind of have. I mean, it's just Red Dead this, Red Dead that. It's like, guys, that's the B game. Red Dead was never as popular as GTA. GTA 6 is going to topple anything in the last... Well, it's going to be the best-selling game of all time. There's just no doubt about it. So I'm tired of hearing about the B game. I'm done with it. I'm done with Red Dead. Please move on to GTA. Get the franchise back on the map in a big way with GTA 6. Tired of the horse stuff. Tired of the cowboy stuff. Tired of the woke simulator stuff. Please. I'm Arthur Morgan. And I'm going to sit on the fence, mister. Why are you offending at me? Huh. I'm not going to get into it, but there's literally a cut scene that's like, it's like a joke. It's just a joke. It's just not a correct period piece. End of story. The damn game takes place in 1898 or whatever the fuck. No one talks like that back then. They don't. Go ask historians. That's, that's the content right there. We're going to get historians. Well, no one was alive back then. That was over 150 years ago. Nonetheless, um, historians, you know, the, the information has been passed on through the generations. Um, they would know. Hey there, mister. You look a little familiar. Well, I best be on my way. Who let the damn simpleton out of the asylum? You all right, boy. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's a great game, but I have problems with it. And I'm not... I, again, these problems, I made those videos years ago before anyone came in here. So it's not me uh, baiting here. It's not me picking on someone. Because I know certain people like certain games in here. And it gets a little it gets a little heated in here. They get hot about it. Okay, like Jerry Lawler said, they get hot about it. I'm just mentioning it because it's the five-year anniversary next week. So it's relevant. Or... It, well, it might not be, because Rockstar probably ain't going to fucking update it. So, But I know, here's the thing, Red Dead Redemption 2 is more popular now than when it came out. Like, no one cared about that. I mean, that's not true. A lot of people cared. I mean, I was there day one. But compared to the popularity of it now with social media and all this shit on, you know, you got a million Red Dead videos. I mean, I... Unbelievable. Hey there, Miss, Miss McFarlane. Arthur, what do you think about women's rights? Well, I'm not too sure, Miss McFarlane. Just sit right on the fucking fence. Don't even have an opinion. At least give Arthur Morgan a fucking opinion. You know, and then the game contradicts itself. It's like, 
Which way does he lean? Not that I really care, but it's just like, you know, is, is did he vote for Trump or not? I mean, that you know, that's basically what we want to know. Arthur Morgan, my name is Michael Bell, and I'm here to whip your ass because we got to retell this revenge tale again and again and again. Arthur, welcome to the camp, Arthur. We need more money, Arthur. Don't y'all see what I can do? Arthur, what do you think about women's rights? Why is that even relevant? Oh, Lord. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan. Oh, man, what a joke of a game. What a joke of a game. He's a good man, by the way. Who the fuck is telling him that? The gaslighting him. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan. <laughs> now let's see what you can do for the camp, Arthur. Well, I got a few pennies. Yeah, not really my cup of tea. I mean, it's detailed, but it has problems. It has a lot of problems. But, you know, I would still say it's in the top ten within the last decade or so. With the problems in mind, I would still say it's a top 10 game, no doubt about it. I can recognize greatness. It's got a lot of problems, okay? But with that said, there's a lot to like. And it clicked with a lot of people, and that's all that really matters. However, with that said, I cannot wait until next week is over so that we move on to GTA 6, the biggest entity in entertainment. Please, I'm done with the Red Dead slop. Let's hear about Jason. Let's hear about Lucia. Let's hear about the Bonnie and Clyde modern day tale. Please. Son of a bitch. Let's see the future of gaming. Let's see the future of gaming. I'm done hearing about the same old games that came out five, six, seven, eight years ago. I'm done. Let's go. Let's see Rockstar. Because Naughty Dog ain't delivering. Naughty Dog ain't putting out The Last of Us 3. Naughty Dog ain't putting out the multiplayer for The Last of Us. So now it's a waiting game. The two best in the business, Naughty Dog and Rockstar Games. Who's coming out first? Well, hopefully it's GTA 6 because Naughty Dog, they fell off. And I'm not saying The Last of Us 2 is bad. It's not. It really isn't. It's a great story. Uh, the problem is, is that people wanted something to complain about, so they jumped on board and they said, Oh my God, how dare Neil Druckmann? He treated Joe like trash. That's trash writing. How is it trash writing? Abby literally saved his life. That's why he trusted her in that moment. So how is it trash writing? It's not. You just want something to hate. It literally logically made sense within that moment. I'm not going to argue about it, bro. I'm not going to argue about it. But I know one thing. The game got people talking, and in the entertainment business, it's all that matters. But you guys can go back and play Red Dead 2 and... <gasps> Arthur, what do you think about women voting? I'm getting kind of hot for them voting rights, Miss McFarlane. Yep, not into it. Sorry. The game got political. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, the game is super political. And then Arthur has lines. It doesn't... It doesn't... I, I'm done with it. The guy just sits on the fucking fence. I'm glad Dan Hauser's gone because he doesn't know how to write fucking characters. The motherfucking character sits right on the fucking fence. Because at one moment, I'm getting kind of hot for them voting rights. The next moment, women belong in the kitchen. The fucking game's stupid. It's a stupid game. None of it makes any sense. And then... The later half of the game, you're playing, you know, it's Sadie, 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 Sadie. I don't give a shit about ah, Sadie. Who cares? These characters did not exist in the first game. It's all make-believe bullshit. They didn't plant the seed with Arthur Morgan. He didn't exist. The game's trash. I'm sorry. And then guess what happens at the end? Oh, the main character dies. Wow, they've already told that story in the first game. It's literally, a, it's a soft reboot is what it is. It's a soft reboot. Oh, Dutch and the gang, we had a little trouble in Blackwater. Okay. We don't need more of that, please. I'm just I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of hearing it. I want GTA 6. Let's go. Fuck. I mean, I'm just done. 
There's a popular uh, GTA creator that does not like Red Dead as well, and it's like, well, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to agree now. It's like, I don't think the games are bad. I don't hate them, but I'm just sick and tired of hearing them, he hearing about them, seeing it. You know, I'm, I'm just done. Show me the future of gaming. Show me GTA 6. Show me what Rockstar North can do. Please, go. Let's get the modern-day Bonnie and Clay tight. Come on. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Nonetheless, let's get back to Spider-Man. So again, this is the current concern with Spider-Man 2. And they are encouraging everyone to update their discs. They had to put out a message to say, hey, if you buy the game on disc, uh, you might have a, a, a rougher experience as opposed to the current build. So they are saying, please update the game, which, you know, you would think most people would do that. But the fact that they had to come out and say that is kind of concerning to say the least. So we're going to be covering the disc version of Spider-Man 2 PS5 uh, more than likely tomorrow. So... And that's going to be more than likely exclusive because most people don't play these games on disc, nor do they, and even if they do, they update the game. So I'm putting my disc into the PS5, and then we're just going to immediately, we're just going to immediately play. We're just going to immediately play. Hey there, mister. Well, it's not like I don't like Red Dead, but, you know, I, I'm just tired of it. It's like we just got a Red Dead Redemption. You know, I don't want to play Red Dead Redemption One again. I played that in 2010 on my PS3. I, I you know, it's it, it's just I, I'm done. I I need to see GTA Six. We need to get down there in Florida and just look at the beautiful landscape, the alligators. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. You know, it's really going to be fantastic. It's a billion dollar game. This is the, the you got you got the main studio. You got the flagship studio on this. This is going to be crazy. GTA 6 is going to be insane. And I'm tired of GTA 5 as well. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. I am tired of GTA 5. I'm sick of it. I don't want to see that game again. I'm done. I'm done with the old games. Show me something new. Show me something new. Please. Tired of seeing GTA 5. Tired of seeing Red Dead. Anything. I'm, I'm just done. I've already played the old games. I've already played Manhunt. I've already played this. I've already played that. Show me the future. Let's go. Show me the future of the open world experience. Arthur Morgan coming through. Holy shit, is it loud out here? I'm sure, San, uh, I'm sure Dan Hauser wanted to write better version of Arthur, but was censored into wokeness as, uh, and making Arthur correct and not going over the line. Well, they didn't, they, well, yeah, you, well, here's the thing. If you give the main, if opinions piss people off, believe me, I fucking know. So if, if you have Arthur Morgan picking a stance, guess what's going to happen? It's going gonna, it's gonna to piss someone off. They want Arthur Morgan to be a likable character. How do you make Arthur Morgan a likable character? You have him sit on the fence with everything. That's what you do. You don't have him pick a side because it's going to potentially alienate the player. They might say, well, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this message. I'm not playing the game anymore. I don't like Arthur anymore, and I don't want to play as him anymore. So what you do is you have that character just sit right on that fucking fence, never pick a side, never have a fucking big, bold stance, and that's how they do it. And it smells like hot dogs out here. She told me she did not love. So damn sad. So damn sad. She told me she did not love. It's so damn sad. It's so damn sad. Bro's desperate for views? Well, I hate to break it to you, but everyone who creates on this platform is desperate for views. You really think, are you really that naive and you think people are just doing it for the kindness of their heart? They're like, oh yeah, we don't care about views. If they're telling you that, they're straight up lying to you, okay? Don't care about views, by the way. That, 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 that's a lie. That's a lie. Would you rather hear the lie? You must. <laughs> If I didn't want views, I would never have anything public. I would just never upload. Fort Biscuit coming through member for 12 months. That's what we're talking about. Hell yeah, by the way, we appreciate that. One year anniversary for Fart Biscuit. That's what we're talking about. Fart Biscuit's in the building. It is loud. It is windy out here. Holy shit. <laughs> Bro, can this, can this... Oh my God. It's like moving like a cape. Oh my God. Holy shit. We're Batman, bro. Shh. 
she told me she did not love and it's so damn sad it's so damn sad well, they just, they, they, they live in the basement. They're not getting outside. I mean, I would love, you know, to have a reality show where we we bring people to L.A. and they, they ride the um, the B-Line. It goes from Union Station to North Hollywood or North Hollywood to Union Station. Ride that a few times, and I, I think it might be.